sexual harassment, supervisor, teacher, and school personnel responsibilities under federal and state sexual harassment laws. Cumberland County School System has a strict sexual harassment policy that is to be followed by all staff, volunteers, and students. What is sexual harassment? Sexual harassment is unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, sexually motivated physical conduct or visual forms of harassment of a sexual nature. There are two types of sexual harassment that we will address today sexual harassment with employment, sexual harassment involving students. Sexual harassment claims can be filed by males, females who are victims of harassment. The victim and harasser may be the same or different gender. Sexual harassment exists if you must submit to unwanted sexual conduct in order to obtain job benefits or keep your job. This is called quid pro quo. Sexual harassment may exist when your work environment is intimidating, hostile, or offensive due to unwanted verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature. The conduct must be sufficiently severe or pervasive to alter the conditions of employment and create an abusive working environment. Examples of sexual harassment, sexual advances, sexual language, physical touching such as kissing, fondling, sexual looks, vulgar or demeaning jokes. Sexual harassment in the employment area. When submission to such conduct is either explicitly or implicitly made a term of condition or employment, or is used as a basis for employment decisions, or when such conduct has the purpose or effect of unreasonably interfering with the individual's work performance, or creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. This is Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, as amended in 1991. Sexual harassment with students. This occurs by an employee, by another student, or by a third party that is sufficiently severe, persistent, or pervasive to limit a student's ability to participate in or benefit from an education program or activity or creates a hostile or abusive educational environment. This is Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972. State laws prohibit sexual harassment. These laws are the North Carolina Employment Practices Act, the Retaliatory Employment Discrimination Act, torts such as wrongful discharge, intentional affliction of emotional distress, criminal laws such as rape, sexual offense, sexual offense by school employee, and assault. Several of these torts and criminal laws will create individual liability for people that commit sexual harassment. There are also federal laws that prohibit sexual harassment. They are Title VII, which prohibits discrimination in employment, Title IX, which requires that students be free from sexual harassment, 42 of the U.S. Code 1981, the discrimination in employment contracts, 42 of the United States Code 1983, which is a civil rights violation. If you commit sexual harassment under 42 U.S. Code 1983 of the Civil Rights Act, that again can create individual liability. Sexual harassment and employment. There are types of employment-based sexual harassment. They are one, quid pro quo, two, adverse employment action such as retaliation, and three, hostile work environment. There is liability for employment-based sexual harassment. Adverse employment action. 
a school board may be liable for instances of employment sexual harassment based upon an adverse employment action. There is also liability for employment-based sexual harassment. In this arena, there are hostile work environment defenses. An employer that exercises reasonable care to prevent and correctly promptly any sexual harassment behavior can use a hostile work environment defense. Also, if the harassed employee unreasonably fails to take advantage of the school's anti-harassment policies, which the Cumberland County Board of Education here has implemented. There are preventive measures for sexual harassment. Cumberland County School Board has adopted the following preventive policies. One, prohib pro prohibition against discrimination, harassment, and bullying. This is policy code 1710-4021-7230. And it's referenced under the school board policy manual contained under Cumberland County Schools website. The other preventive measure that Cumberland County School Board has adopted is the discrimination, harassment, and bullying complaint procedure, which again is referenced under the school board policy manual and under the Cumberland County Schools website. How to prevent sexual harassment in the workplace. Treat coworkers with respect. Avoid telling sexually jokes or discussing sexually explicit topics. Do not hug, kiss, or massage another person at work. If a coworker tells you that your conduct or words are offensive, stop. No means no. Report sexual harassment. There are individual liability concerns if you commit sexual harassment. 42 United States Code 1983 Civil Rights Act imposes individual liability. You also may have individual liability where you're personally responsible under the tort, intentional affliction, emotional distress. Also, criminal assault and disciplinary actions may again expose you to individual liability if you commit sexual harassment. Title IX prohibits sexual harassment involving students. Hostile environment sexual harassment of a student by other students, employees, or third parties is created if the conduct of a sexual nature is sufficiently severe, persistent, or pervasive to limit a student's ability to participate in or benefit from the education program or creates a hostile or abusive educational environment. Title IX sexual harassment, again, is prohibited with students. It applies to educational institutions that receive federal fundings, such as the Cumberland County School System. It also applies to students that engage in academic, educational, extracurricular, athletic, and any other school program. It applies to activities that occur at school facilities, the bus stop, on the bus, athletics, school dances, school field trips, after school activities, tutoring, or any other location if it's sponsored by the school. There's reasonable care to prevent sexual harassment involving students. Cumberland County School has policies. Also, Cumberland County provides supervisor training and education. Title IX sexual harassment. The types of sexual harassment that is prohibited is quid pro quo sexual harassment, hostile environment, and sexual harassment. The liability of a school for sexual harassment. A school may be liable for even one instance of sexual harassment of quid pro quo or adverse employment action. How to prevent sexual harassment? One, avoid physical, physical contact with students. Keep your own physical space. Two, avoid sexual conversations with students, including sexual or inappropriate emails and text messages. 
Three, avoid being alone with a student of either sex. Arrange to have the activity within sight of another adult. If you must be alone with a student, leave the door open and inform another adult. Four, avoid socializing with students in situations that could be misconstrued as personal or romantic. Five, do not use a school computer for anything you would not want your boss or mother to see. Six, follow Cumberland County's internet safety policy. Seven, follow the student internet use agreement. Eight, avoid transporting students in your personal vehicle unless your job requires it, such as being a social worker. Nine, limit socializing with students on social media. Again, Cumberland County Schools has an internet safety policy, 3226, that we reference you to. Cumberland County Schools also has a student internet use agreement, policy 3225. Cumberland County Schools also has an employee use of social media policy, policy number 7335. Also avoid any romantic conduct with current or former students, even if the students are over 18 years of age. The liability of school for sexual harassment. A school may be liable for hostile environmental sexual harassment by its employees. Reuben, I'm going to redo the slide. The liability of school for sexual harassment. A school may be liable for hostile environment sexual harassment by its employees called non quid pro quo if, one, the harassing employee acted with apparent authority, or two, the harassing employee was aided in carrying out the sexual harassment of students by his or her position of authority within the school system, and three, the school may also be liable for non quid pro quo sexual harassment if the school knew or should have known of the harassment and failed to take immediate and appropriate steps to remedy the known harassment. An example of this would be a coach threatens to bench a student unless that student agrees to respond to his or her sexual advances, although the coach never even follows through on this threat. Policies. Schools are required to adopt and publish grievance procedures providing for prompt and equitable resolution of sex discrimination complaints and to disseminate this policy against sex discrimination. The Cumberland County Board of Education has adopted the following policies. The Prohibition Against Discrimination, Harassment, and Bullying Policy Code 1710. This is referenced on the School Board Policy Manual contained in the Cumberland County School website. Also the Discrimination, Harassment, and Bullying Complaint Procedure, Policy Code 1720. That is referenced in the School Board Policy Manual and contained under the Cumberland County School website. Also the Staff Student Relations Policy Code 4040, that is again referenced in the School Board Policy Manual and contained under the Cumberland County School website. Individual liability. As mentioned earlier, an individual may be exposed to individual liability where he or she has to pay money out of his own pocket and may also be exposed to criminal punishment. 42 United States Code 1983 referenced as the Civil Rights Act, requires that if an employee commits sexual harassment, he or she may be exposed to civil rights violation. And this may be if you're a culpable person, also if you have supervisor liability. An individual can be held liable under a theory of supervisory liability under the Civil Rights Act where one, the supervisor had actual or constructive knowledge that his or her subordinate was engaged in a conduct 
that pose a pervasive and unreasonable risk of sexual harassment. Two, that the supervisor's response to that knowledge was so inadequate as to show deliberate indifference to or tacit authorization of the alleged offensive practices. And three, that there was an affirmative causal link between the supervisor's inaction and sexual harassment injury. Criminal liability. Again, an individual may be exposed to criminal punishment if he or she commits sexual harassment. Types of criminal liability are first degree rape, second degree rape, first degree sexual offense, second degree sexual offense, intercourse and sexual offenses with certain victims, statutory rape, misdemeanor assault, and most importantly, taking indecent liberties with the student, NC General Statutes 14.202.4. The majority of these crimes are felony offenses, and for state licensed employees, carry license revocation penalties.